I'm going to demonstrate two calorimetry questions involving neutralization. So let's look at the first question. Determine the molar heat of neutralization of nitric acid when 25 mL of 1 mole per liter nitric acid at 20.5 degrees is neutralized with 50 mL of 1.0 mole per liter potassium hydroxide at 20.5. Final temperature is 33, so we have to find the molar heat of neutralization. So here we go. Um, let's start off with sign involving water and a chemical reaction. So we're going to start off with, as usual, heat lost equals heat gained. All right, we can see the neutralization reaction is making the water get hotter. So obviously the neutralization reaction was losing the heat and the water, the mixture, is gaining. Okay, so again, think about it in terms of I've got 25 milliliters of nitric acid and I've added to that 50 milliliters of potassium hydroxide. Okay, these are undergoing a chemical change. It's pretty much just an aqueous environment, meaning water. So this is why we can assume it's a, like a calorimetry example involving water. We're gonna make the same assumptions that we always do. So here we go, uh, the neutralization is an enthalpy change where potential energy changes are occurring. So we're gonna use N delta HM. The water is undergoing, or the solution, the aqueous environment is undergoing a temperature change. We make the assumptions, it's the same as water. Okay, and we'll get started with trying to substitute in question is asking for the molar heat of neutralization of nitric acid. All right, so the moles then right here have to reflect nitric acid. Well, remember in solution chemistry, N is equal to C times B. That's how we find moles. So the concentration is given at 1.0 moles per liter. The volume is given at 25 milliliters, which we have to convert to liters. That's our moles. We're going to multiply that by the variable we're looking for. Okay, and now we continue working through this. Uh, we're going to find that the mass of the water, M, is a bit of a difficult uh, question. The way we solve for that is we look at the mass of the entire solution. Well, recall in this example, we put HNO3, 25 mils, okay, and KOH is 50 mils. Those two together is what's absorbing the energy. So I have to consider that in my combined mass. So the mass of the solution that's absorbing the heat, which we're assuming is that of water, 75 grams. Specific heat capacity, we assume that to be the same as water, 4.19 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And the temperature change, 33 minus 20.5 is 12.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, I do the math and I find out that delta HM is equal to negative 157 kilojoules per mole. Remember the negative just means that it's exothermic. And I think I need three, no I need two significant digits so I have to change that to negative 1.6 times 10 to the two kilojoules per mole. This next question comes from question 31 in your workbook and it's very similar to the lab that we're doing in class. I'm gonna go through how you solve this question. It's again a neutralization question, very similar. So I, I'm going to be finding in this case the molar heat of neutralization for sodium hydroxide. Okay, so I'm going to start off same thing. Heat loss equals heat gain. Again, temperature of the water is increasing, so it's the neutralization that's losing, it's the water that's gaining. Okay, and again, it's a potential energy change, so N delta HM equals MC delta T of the water. Okay, exactly like the last question, how do we set this up? Well, it's asking for the molar heat of neutralization for sodium hydroxide. Recall it's a solution, so N has to be equal to CV. All right, so then how do I get N is equal to CV? Well, let's work through this, okay? Concentration is given uh, in the question. It says both solutions are one mole per liter. Okay, so I'm gonna start on the far left with the concentration, 1.00 mole per liter. I have to multiply by the volume. Well, that's where it gets tricky, because to get the volume of sodium hydroxide, I have to deduce that from the mass. If you look at this experiment, we have the mass of the cups in the lid at 5.91 grams. The mass of the cups in the lid in sodium hydroxide is 57.83. So if I go 57.83 minus 5.91, I'll get 51.92 grams. I'm going to write that number down, 51.92, but remember, that's grams. 
We can't write grams because we need it to be liters. So in this, in this case, don't forget that one gram is equal to one milliliter in solution, chemistry involving mostly water, okay? So, oops, didn't need to erase all of that. So, let me put that back. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go one mole per liter, and I'm gonna multiply that by the volume, which as I said, is 51.92 grams. Convert that to milliliters, divide by a thousand, and get 0 0.0. 5192 liters. Okay, so that's the equivalent mass converted into liters. Okay, now the mass of the water combined is going to be looking at the entire solution. So the mass of the cups, lid, sodium hydroxide, and sulfuric acid, 89.04, minus the cups and the lid gives us the mass of the entire mixture minus the cups and the lid. That's what's absorbing the energy. So that's 83.13 grams. Then I can multiply by 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius, same as water, times the temperature change that's stated at 8.3 degrees Celsius. And that gets me then, oh, I forgot my head over variable. Sorry, this would be delta HM right here. So solving for delta HM is equal to negative 55.6 kilojoules per mole. You'll notice that is a little bit different than the back of the booklet, which that answer is incorrect. All right, so this is the same one we're going to be doing in the lab, same assumptions made, and that's how you do a neutralization reaction.